I'm Justin Snyder. And I'm Stephanie Greenwood Snyder. We're just an average everyday couple. But over the years, we've seen the incredible importance of building community together. We'll be talking with friends and experts about their stories and experiences to help us learn and grow. We don't want to just survive through life. We want to intentionally thrive. This is The Intentional Thriver. Sailors, what's going on? Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having us. We're of so course. Oh, man. oh my goodness. All right. You guys are our first guests. So <gasps> if this all just like burns to the ground in episode one, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. It's our fault. We'll know why. <laughs> we'll, we'll know why. <laughs> Obviously it wasn't yes. our fault. Oh man. Got the LaCroix out and everything. Uh, here's here's to thriving intentionally. Hey. Right. hey. There you go. Man. We, Justin said I can't eat or drink in here. It's so. true. <laughs> it's true. Because it will be all over this couch in no time. Fair My enough. goodness. Like. <laughs> Okay. The amount of crumbs I've had to like push out of our bed is <laughs> that's <laughs> so much information. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that another episode. Yeah. Crumbs in the bed. Yeah. I love it. And well, how I mean, much you love that person driving. to like. <laughs> all right. We always want to start off by just like saying something we really admire and appreciate about you guys and um, respect in your you know, how you're thriving and, uh, at least from our perspective, yeah, you can, you can think. tell us differently and be <laughs> like, that. Yeah. it's, it's all, it's all bad. No. Yeah. Um, but the first thing I really appreciate about you guys is like Brian and Katie, I will let people know are some of like the smartest people I have ever met. Mm-hmm. Um, they, especially, I mean, no offense, Brian, but especially Katie, mm-hmm. Katie no. is like very, yes. very intelligent. I love getting to like talk history and things mm-hmm. with her with both of you guys. And then the other thing I really appreciate about both of you is like how real and genuine you both are. Like you're just very real people to talk to. And especially um, with working in faith-based organizations and religious organizations and things like that. I, I think like, I really value that personally because, you know, from our story, we came out of, at least I came out of an environment where there was a lot of kind of that hypocrisy, Faux, you know, that, that kind of thing. So I, I really respect that and admire that and appreciate about that. You guys, and then like your patience as well. Um, again, when you are working in a job that requires a lot of interaction with people and people dealing with a lot of different things like that can be, man, I can only imagine how like emotionally and physically exhausting that has to be, but you guys like, and all the time that we have known you have been just so patient and kind with people and just and just loving. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. um, that's like enough of me gushing. Right. I don't know. I'm going to pass it over to Stephanie. Yeah. Well, I'm actually taking a PMP course about project management and something they've added into for project managers to really work on and embody is called servant leadership. And mm. they're telling us about it and what it's like and what we're supposed to be. And I'm like, this literally sounds like Brian and Katie. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Like the definition, the kindness, the patience, like you've already said, the the long suffering, um, the diplom- diplo- diplomacy, diplomacy when needed. Um, yep. I, I just really appreciate you guys. You guys choose your words really well, uh, even in difficult situations, which we've seen you walk through some mm. and um, you walk through some with us and we're just love you guys so much and we appreciate that you've been intentional in our relationship even Uh after we've moved away like we've done Mm -hmm. virtual dates before double dates and like it's just really cool that we get to now record this one we didn't record the other one so (laughs) (laughs) So, anyway we love you guys so yeah. absolutely mm-hmm. now um you know yeah, you guys can gush on us no I'm, I'm totally kidding i'm totally kidding no let's like just so people can know you guys because obviously we know you but for you know our listeners who who might not know you um can you tell us a little bit about like who you guys are and a little bit about your background and yeah things like that take it away me oh goodness okay um well, I'm Katie. Uh, <laughs> I let's see. We met um, a long time ago. We met when I was 17. He was 18 back in college, and we were just friends for a long time. And um, eventually, like way after college, we kind of got together, started dating, got married, and um, so and it's been just all wedded bliss from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but 
obviously, um, well, not obviously, I guess, uh, Brian is, is a pastor and I'm a teacher at a private Episcopal school in, in Florida. And so, um, I love that and you love what you do. And we have two beautiful kids that we love a lot. Boys, they're crazy, but we love them. (laughs) All the boys. That's right. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Our boys are almost three and almost one. So that's pretty wild. And uh, we're having a great time with that. Uh, yeah, I, we both grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, Katie was lived in Charlotte her whole life. I was a missionary kid, so I traveled all over the place. And uh, we met first day of college. Seven years after that, we ended up starting to date. And uh, like eight years, or then, then the next year, uh, we got married. So um, yeah, we've been really good friends for a long time. And Seven years. Love. Wow. You, you finally wore her down. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Yes. I mean, I think that is part of our story. <laughs> that is the story. Actually. Yeah. That that, that, it actually is. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> right. yeah. Good for you, Katie. Man. So, okay. So Brian, you're a pastor and you were a missionary kid. Mm-hmm. So yes. you've got like a big dose of like interaction with faith and religion all like all all kinds of things um Mm -hmm. i mean for starting with you brian but i mean katie for you as well can you guys talk a little bit about your faith journey and like what that has looked like for you guys and um yeah just just kind of talking about that a little bit yeah for sure um well uh for once again Thank you guys so much for having us on the Intentional Thriver. Of course. Incredible podcast. Stoked to be part of it. Very honored. Um, So yeah, uh, as as I said, uh, I am a missionary kid. So when I was five years old, my parents came to me and they said, like, we're going to move to West Africa to be missionaries. And at the time, I didn't really have any other context for it. I just thought, like, this is what people do. And so, uh, yeah, pretty much my whole life, um, up until I was in high school, we were just moving and just living in Europe, living in Africa, uh, never really staying too long in the same place. Uh, so I definitely like had a belief in God and I had like a, a, a personal faith, but I think a, my life was just like very crazy for a young kid. So I think I was just kind of like taking it all in. Um, And I don't really, I don't really remember having like these like big major moments of like personally uh, having personal experiences of like ownership. Um, You know, I think that's one thing that we talk about with like uh, now with like high school students or with college students is like, we want them to have moments of like ownership of their faith. Um, And I I don't really, I, I think it was just more of like, I was just experiencing life. Um, and then when I was in uh, high school and when I was in college, um, I just, um, I, we moved back from Africa to North Carolina and lived in Charlotte. I went to a Christian high school and I was just kind of caught up in the high school, like kind of like life and then later like the college life. And I was just very interested in like just being accepted and being liked. And so I don't really think I had a lot of like faith moment. Like I had some faith moments, but it wasn't really personal to myself. Mm. Um, And especially in high school, um, I went to a pretty legalistic high school and uh, I went to a high school that like uh, was really like obsessed with like the end times. So I was like, kind of like just very afraid of like the end times was like sort of like the defining like religious experience for me like, uh, in, in like, uh, high school, so that was kind of like all I knew. I was like, well, I guess, I guess like reading the Bible was just about like learning about like the tribulation happening or like the antichrist or all that stuff. Um, so that was kind of like my experience was kind of more like fear-based, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, then after oh, I went to a, a college and that's where we met was in college and our college was very focused on like apologetics and worldview. And kind of the idea that like there is a rational reason to believe in faith. And so that was something that was really captivated me when I decided to like choose the college that we went to is because I was like, man, like 
I do believe this is real, but I've never heard someone like explain there's this rational reason to believe that. And so I think throughout my college experience, it was a lot of like learning a, a reasonable answer to the question of like, uh, why would you believe in Jesus? Um, but then after college was really when I had a moment when uh, like Christ became like personal to me. Um, I just kind of got to a place where I just realized that like I was very unhappy in my life. Um, a lot of the things that I'd been pursuing uh, from just being accepted by other people and also just pursuing to kind of like make me feel good uh, and make me like happy. I just realized they weren't making me happy. Mm-hmm. And so um, I came to a moment where I was just like, God, like I've heard about you my whole life, but like, if you're real, like I really want to have like an encounter with you. And so during that like year after college was really when like my faith became serious and I started taking it seriously. And I really would say like over the past, like, 10 years since that's happened or 11 or 12 years, like God has just radically like changed my life. Um, he's changed my heart. He's changed my mind. He's, he's just changed who I am so much. And so um, that this has been the greatest season of like faith for me and growth for me uh, just because of like God being in my life. Wow. That's awesome. So one of my, I, I don't know why it's so stuck in my head, probably because of the season of life I was in, but I remember your first, the first time I saw you, Brian, that's so weird to it, say. It was magical. <laughs> no, I was probably crying because it was just coming off of a lot of like church hurt, a lot of um, struggle with, okay, can I worship in a place that has a drum set? I've been told my whole life I can. Yeah. So oh, what man. am I doing right yeah. now? Oh, um, and I also was that like 23 year old that was like, I, I, this hurts my ears. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, for sure. Anyway. Um, but I remember you were talking and literally they prayed over you that night because you were going to get married to Katie. Yeah. So I know. <laughs> like, yeah, to, to Katie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes <laughs> that one. Yeah, so cool. like, I don't know. That night is very, very vivid in my memory, but I remember mm-hmm. something you've said and it stuck with me and it kind of goes to what you were saying about your, your, uh, faith journey and how, the drastic difference between your time in Africa and your time in America was just the pure, the sheer amount of stuff Mm -hmm. Americans have Mm -hmm. and the sheer amount of just, and you, I think you said something that just really sticks with me. And I I tell people this, that like the spiritual world is so much more vivid in those countries Mm -hmm. and that Satan uses that but in America, he just needs stuff like mm-hmm. stuff does the same, like mm-hmm. has the same effect almost. I don't remember exactly your words, but wow. almost the same effect as like these witch doctors or these like these people that um are conjuring up very real, very mm-hmm. scary, very live um, spirits. And mm-hmm. so so what kind of experience did you have going from? a culture that had very little to a culture, you know, like you said, in high school where you were just consumed with fitting in and stuff like that makes so much sense to me. If you could just talk a little bit more about that transition that you went through. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it, it always, anytime uh, a speaker, like someone quotes a speaker, it's always like really cool. It's like anyone remembers anything that, that I say. So uh, that's really sweet. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, that is that's very funny though i do vividly remember you guys telling us about like your first experiences like at kind of like a different type of church and like I, i'm sure you were like hearing the music and being like well hopefully someone legit gets up to speak and then i got <laughs> like, oh because no. this is all a show yeah they don't really <laughs> this care place about reeks of hypocrisy <laughs> Look at them wearing oh. pants without pleats in them. Justin oh literally was taught that men wearing pants without pleats was immodest. That's true. So. I'm, sh- I'm sure that the, um, <laughs> we rocked a lot of pleated pants. pants in our and day. I was really into like the really long shirts with like zippers on the sides. Yes. 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 The zippers yeah. all the way up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Loved them. And- yes. Yeah, so I'm sure you guys, I'm sure you guys are really blessed by that. So. Oh, you know. <laughs> We worked through it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, You're on the podcast. Yeah, so, the you know. We got over it. <laughs> well, yeah. So that's a, that's a great question. Um, 
No, so I guess for me personally, um, living in like different cultures, it, it's definitely very, just very like eye opening, I guess. Um, and I think it really helps you to understand like just the differences. Uh, one of my favorite, like, I guess like stories, it's like a little parable um, that I think about a lot is, and it's, it's really cheesy, but it's really profound is that um, the, the old fish says to the young fish, how's the water today? And the young fish says, what's water? And kind of like the concept of it is like, sometimes you don't realize like what is surrounding you because you just like take it for granted. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like living in different cultures has like helped, helped with that. But yeah, as far as your question goes, Stephanie, like I feel like, I guess like from a personal perspective, and I don't even know if this is where like you were hoping to go with it. I have but no I'm, hopes. I'm just charging. <laughs> Uh, from a personal perspective, I think like growing up as like a missionary kid and growing up like without having as much, like it, it, like I would say, if anything, like it's made me like desire more like financial security and desire mm -hmm. like enjoy like the nice things that we have. And so like that, I, that's kind of something that I actively probably have to like fight against, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say like, we're like, you know, wealthy and like, you know, driving like expensive cars and, you know, like all that stuff. But like, you know, it's like, it's definitely something that I find in my heart that I, I can like desire more of. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one thing that popped up to me. It was like, I think I, I, you know, probably what I said about like, it's easy to get sucked into materialism or it's easy to get sucked into consumerism. Absolutely. Um, I think, I think it's something that I have to fight against and it's something that I have to like consciously remind myself because what we have, you know, with, uh, I mean, everything is marketing and there's so much marketing in our world now that's trying to just get us to say like, if you can just do this or if you can just do that, that's going to make you happy. That's going to make you satisfied. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to chase it endlessly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's what's going to make you thrive and Yes. Yeah. And then it's just one more thing, one yeah. more thing. There's yeah. no yeah, ultimate answer. Yeah. Kate, yeah. what about you? Like for your journey and then having to settle for this guy and everything like that. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was um so I I grew up in the church. I was um very blessed with with two parents that were believers, and um so I was raised kind of as, as a Christian per se. I remember like praying a prayer, like, um, asking Jesus into my life when I was pretty young. I think I was maybe like six or seven, uh, but it was very real to me in the moment. Like I still remember it in my mind, um, that time that it happened. But, uh, and then I feel like as I, I grew up, you know, you're, you're a kid and, and you kind of like, you believe in Jesus, but you're, what does that really mean? And like, what does that look like? And so I, was just kind of growing in my faith. And then I feel like my first, I don't know, crisis of faith, if you will, mm -hmm. um, was when I was in high school. Um, I went through this situation at church, which was very complicated and weird, but basically there, there were people at church that um, really hurt me in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And as a 13 year old, it really rocked my faith because these were adults that I looked up to that I, you know, was taught to, uh, you know, listen to and respect. And they just really hurt me in a, a lot of ways. And it, it sunk me into a pretty deep depression. So I was fairly depressed, I would say, um, for several years. Mm -hmm. And um, it got, you know, I was, I was in a pretty dark place. I mean, at, at that time, I feel like the whole discussion about mental health wasn't really there. I mean, that wasn't that long ago, but like, I feel like it's changed a lot over the years. But um, so I don't think that I would have like, actually called it depression at the time, but now looking back, I know it was. Um, so anyways, but things just got really, really bad. And I remember one night, it was like a worship night at my youth group and I was maybe like 16 or something at this point. And I remember just like literally like falling on my knees before the Lord. And I was like, you've got to help me because I can't do this anymore. Like I am so done. 
Um, and so you have to kind of, like you said, you know, it was this moment with God where it was like, you have to show me that you're real and, and, and really, you know, just show up for me right now. Um, and, you know, it, it doesn't always happen this way for everyone, but it did happen for me that that night I literally walked out of that room and that depression had lifted. And I, I wow. literally felt like a night and day difference. And wow. that just did change my life, you know, in a lot of ways and really made my faith my own kind of like taking ownership and in some ways just God sh just showed himself to me in a, in a miraculous way. And so um, that was huge for me. And then I just continued to kind of, you know, build my faith and um, or God was building my faith and, you know, going to college and learning more about him and his word and, and building community. And um, obviously being married to, to this guy has definitely um, helped me grow in, in a lot of ways as well. And so, yeah, just over the years, um, just growing closer to the Lord, but, uh, yeah, good. <laughs> good. so good. Um, something both of you guys were talking about, I think, I think Brian, you had mentioned it, um, cl close to the beginning, but you were talking about how, like, when, when a faith, uh, I think you were talking about, like, as you were discovering more about your faith and thinking through just like the, the logical and, and those aspects of it, um, the thing that like stood out to you was how does this make me treat or interact with people? Like how, how does that kind of practically play out in just my lifestyle, in my interactions, like who I am as a person? Can, can you talk a little bit more about that, about like how your faith really helps shape you kind of like as, as a person, as a parent, as like, you know, Katie, yes. Katie's partner, as like all, all these different things. How does that practically play out? Would you say for you? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, Thank you. <laughs> well, I I think, I mean, I think that it, it all comes down to, to like love. Hmm. And um, I have um, a, a tat that's uh, John 15, 13. Um, me and, and several of my buddies have it. And John 15, 13 says, there's no greater love than this, than a man who would lay down his life for his friends. Wow. Yeah. And it's a very like famous verse in like the um, first responder community. Um, mm -hmm. Cause that's something that like they truly like do embody like sure, yeah. Yeah. Line every day. Um, but really like the true like origin is like Jesus said that um, the night that he was going to be betrayed the night before he went to the cross um, where he really did like lay down his life uh, for us. Mm -hmm. And um, we believe that like Jesus was a real person mm -hmm. um, and he was a historical person um, that he died. He rose again. These are like verifiable things that happened in history, but the significance of Jesus's death is that like he died so that we could have our sins forgiven so that we could have life so that we could have access to God so that we could um, walk in what we were called to walk in. And so uh, that is like the ultimate form of love. And uh, he, uh, Jesus, like the kind of like people talk about, like in the Bible, there's like a lot of rules or there's a lot of like regulations or a lot of uh, commands. Sure. But Jesus kind of gave this one command that like summed up all the other ones, mm -hmm. which he said, like, love one another uh, in the same way that I've loved you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so, I mean, that looks like, uh, a self-sacrificial love, yeah. um, which I think is like one of the hardest things in the world to actually do. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like the goal for, for me. That's the goal for, for Katie. Like that's, that's kind of what we're striving towards is more and more of just self-sacrificial love. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think if you look at people through that lens of like, this is how Christ has loved me. I want to extend that love to other people. That's, that is, that's the goal. Yeah. Kind of to look at the flip side of yeah. that for a second. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to speak very frankly, I feel like that doesn't get embodied a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> from, yeah. from, uh, I don't know, like at least from, from our, our experience stories, yeah. and our stories, mm -hmm. like there, there's a lot of hurt out there. There's a lot of like very damaging, toxic, ideas and mindsets and ideologies and like practical application of yeah. that, that seems to come out of a lot of faith 
faith-based organizations. And I mean, obviously you guys work in a faith-based organization. Yeah. I, f- I like feel bad saying that, but like, yeah. can, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, why do you think so many people are really like frustrated with religion or frustrated with faith and like have, have kind of walked away from that for, for reasons like, you know, we we've talked about that are very valid, <laughs> you know, people being very seriously hurt and damaged, you know, can, can you guys talk about that at all? Yeah, I think for a very long time in this country, this is my, my history teacher coming up. Let's go. But, um, you know, I, I think we had here what could be termed as cultural Christianity. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, when, when the country was founded, everybody would identify as some, some type of Christian. You know, I mean, it, it, was, it was pretty much universally accepted. Or even if you didn't call yourself a Christian, you at least adhered to a certain set of values. And I think that that cultural Christianity was the norm for several hundred years. And I think Hmm. people just kind of grew up in the church and was like, Oh yeah, I'm a Christian because everybody is. And, you know, it it was just, maybe it wasn't always super real for everyone. And there Hmm. are a lot of people that were just going to church and, and doing the things and walking the walk. And then what we saw was, you know, people, really misrepresent Jesus as a result because it wasn't really real for them. It wasn't really their faith. Um, and so, you know, you have this, this wide range of misuse of, uh, the Bible and, and, and what God calls us to, you know, everything from using the Bible to justify slavery back in the day Mm -hmm. to, you know, using the Bible to, you know, in, in continuation of that to justify things like segregation or, you know, treating certain people groups, you know, badly, or, you know, even things like, you know, when I was growing up, my pastor had an affair with the secretary, which I feel like is, you know, the story of so many people. And, yeah. you know, and then you, you see the, 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 the morphing of Christian teaching and, and people that are, you know, they, they say they're, they're believers, but then they do something else. And I think a lot of it just comes down to like, there's, there's a, there's a difference between going to church and, and really knowing who Jesus is on a personal level, you know? And, and I think that a lot of people, you know, of our generation, like grew up in, in churches where they saw these things happening all around them. They're like, I don't want any part of that. And unfortunately, instead of, you know, um, Ginger Duggar has been talking about this a lot lately. She just wrote a book, but, you know, she talked about like disentangling from some of these wrong ideas without completely throwing away, you know, Jesus and and the truth of, of who Jesus is. And so, um, yeah, I, I guess it's a very long answer to just say that I, I think there has been a lot of misrepresentation of, of Christianity and, and, and Jesus, um, sadly. And I think that, um, the way that we combat that is, you know, just showing people who Jesus is and, and helping them encounter him for, for themselves um, instead of just kind of having this cultural Christianity where we just kind of do the things, but don't really like know him. Hmm. So. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I definitely think, I mean, I, I a hundred percent agree with what you, what you said. I think that's like really, really strong that there's like, holding on to like facets of, of Christianity without the true like power of Christ. So, I mean, I think that's true. I was having a meeting today with an individual um, and he was like, I I do feel like um, I really am drawn to what you guys are teaching as far as like more of a true, and I'm going somewhere with this, but like, I'm drawn to what you guys are teaching as far as more of like uh, as close as possible interpretation and application of the scriptures. But what he noticed was he's like, there's so much like backbiting and criticism and like, just sort of like, like infighting in your camp. And I was like, man, that's so true. And it, it's so sad. Um, and I, I do think that there's, there's like a couple things. I think there's a lot of like fear that happens where uh, people can like look out at the world and they can have a response of like, man, the world doesn't look like what I'm supposed, what I believe it should be. 
but like the the correct interpretation is like to look at how Christ went to serve and love the world and lay down mm. his life for the world. But it's much easier to just kind of huddle down and be fearful and be defensive and put up walls. Mm-hmm. And that could just lead to all sorts of things. Sure. And then there's, there's also just like the aspect of like the brand of Christianity mm. um, does make money. Like there's, there's a lot of money in it. There's a lot of donations in it. And when success happens, uh, like when power happens, um, it's like the line from uh, like Lord of the Rings, like that, like the rings were given to the men who above all else desire power. Right. And it's like, Mm. there's something in our hearts that loves power. And once Mm. that power is achieved, I think you have so much more incentive to maintain that. That's why you see, I think so much like abuse happen. You see so many unhealthy things because it's like, well, this is working. And we've, we've seen that in our context, sadly. And it's something we're trying to move away from is like, oh, well, like God's blessing this. There's great things happening. So we're going to kind of sweep these things under the rug. Mm. Because we don't want to stop, you know, the momentum. Yeah. And I, a lot of there, that's, there's fear with that as well. It makes a lot of sense. Mm. Unfortunately, yeah. we, we both have in our story, similar to Katie, where, that power was completely misrepresented Uh, or abused abused to the point of um, really, really sad. Great, great damage. Great damage. Mm -hmm. And I think um, what you said, Katie, about the detangling of your belief system and of faith and stuff like that is, is very hard to do. And sometimes Mm -hmm. Justin and I look at each other and we're like, it would just be easier to walk away. Like it would be easier Mm -hmm. to just kind of, let that that time of our lives, you know, that was our parents thing, or that was, you know, something we did try it out, and just kind of walk away. Um, I think that that's something that we're seeing a lot in our friends right now from yeah. our childhood and stuff. And yeah. I, th- I, I don't think that's something that we can sit here and say, man, how could they do that? Like, <laughs> what is wrong with them? Yeah, nope. What are they yeah. not believing? What are they not, you know, whatever? Yeah. We're, we're sitting here saying, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Yeah. So what? what what would you say to someone who has come to you and said, hey, I've tried this out. I'm like you. I grew up in the church or I, you know, this was my thing. And I know you know these people, these people in your lives. Uh, what would you say to them if you had an opportunity that they asked you genuinely, what would you do if you were in my, my shoes? Mm, wow, good question. That is a good question. Um, I, I actually can, 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 can I ask a question of you guys? Please. Fine. <laughs> well, no, I mean, oh, no. absolutely. I don't know if I'm we'll know the like, answer, yeah. but <laughs> no, I mean, like, I feel like, and honestly, like you guys are, I mean, as, as amazing of a question that is, that is Stephanie, like, I think you guys are like maybe more qualified than me or Katie to answer it. And I, I talked to a girl, um, like last week and she's like pretty new to our church Mm -hmm. and she was like, yeah, like, uh, just moved to the area. And I was like, yeah, what brought you here? And she's like, well, we were part of like a pretty unhealthy cult for like decades as a family. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like, and like, I kind of just wanted, like, I really was trying to be like sensitive and not like, you know, like, Tell me more. Asked her, like, get all up in her face, like, and just ask a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. All up in her face in an aggressive way, but just like, I'm just curious. <laughs> curious, right, yeah. yeah, totally. But like, I think about like that, or I think about, you know, you guys' story. Yeah. And there's so many reasons to like leave, but you guys did stay. So, like, what was it yeah. when you think back and you're like, man, why, why did you stay? Yeah, sure. Like, when you stay, I mean, stay, stay in the faith. Yeah. Yeah. For me, 100% community. Yeah. Like it came down to I found real people who were going to be honest and kind and listen to my questions and listen to where I was in life and not throw judgment or throw Bible verses or throw, you know, things in my face. Um, I think it really came down to finding for the first time in my real life, healthy female relationships. Um, 
you you know you know the small group we were in that was life changing to many people because we just did life together. We just talked like Katie was saying. As a mom, it's important, but I think in any season of life, it's important to just be real with someone and say. And it's just so crazy how many times you say like, "Oh, here's my dark, ugly, ugly secret," and everybody in the room goes, "Me too!" <laughs> like, or "Whoa, I've been there," or "Whoa, I thought I was the only one." And I think that was just really eye-opening for me because I grew up in such a um, legalistic, even though they wouldn't want that label on them at all. I, I, the the application I heard and felt was very legalistic and very like, this is how you're expecting me to be, um, to the point where somebody had to literally look me in the face, and this was someone who uh, was one of those like this is the fact here it is. But they were like, you're, you just lie all the time. You just tell me whatever you think I want to hear because you just know what it's, what you're supposed to say or what you're supposed to look like. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Like I remember being embarrassed, but being like, yeah, cause I thought it was more godly of me to lie about it because that's what God somehow would like bless then for me to just be honest and be like, man, I'm really, I'm struggling. So I think that's part of it. And I think also the part of, um, I, I think there was some, some fear about stepping into a, another culture, it almost, you know, than what we have known our whole lives. And so sure. um, when we started stepping into that, it just didn't feel right, which I know is the Holy Spirit, you know, and I know that was a testament that our faith was real and we did own it um, because there was definitely a block, you know, whenever we tried to step outside of. Yeah. I mean, I I would say for me, it was, it was kind of along the lines, um, Brian, what you were talking about with like exploring that for yourself and, and finding like getting to an age where it's like, wait a minute, why do I think this way? Yeah. And, and really starting to, like for me, it was doing some investigation, looking into the the teachings of Jesus and being like, okay, wh what is he actually saying? And understanding the importance of context, understanding the importance of culture at, that that played. I mean, that's a, that's a huge factor, you know, of, of like that we weren't taught that, that we were America. You know, well, yeah, it was a very <laughs> Westernized for lack of a better yeah. term um, interpretation yeah. Mm -hmm. of yeah. of what Jesus was saying and things like that. And so for me it it was starting there to like really shake out, knock around, ask hard questions um and kind of di dig into that and being like is ca can I trust this is is this legitimate? And then like okay, understanding that aspect like okay, there there's legitimacy in this, but yeah, sure. There may be like legitimacy in the theory of it, but what what about the application? Like, are yeah. people actually able to live this out in a way that is genuine and authentic and that actually equates true change in their life? Yeah. And that's where exactly where Stephanie was saying, like that community aspect comes in because at the end of the day, no one can perfectly live that out. Um, but so much of that is like, the spirit and the attitude that you come to that with, like mm -hmm. an idea of brokenness and brokenness, not in the sense of like, eh, I, you know, I'm just a person who makes mistakes. Therefore it's all good. And I'll just do whatever I want. And right. because, Hey, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Let's, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, absolutely. No one's perfect. But at the same time, like, are you taking responsibility for the mistakes that you're making? Are you trying to like within a structure of having people around you in your community who can, you can kind of have accountability to, to be better, to, to try to put up like practical, you know, aspects and, and, and fences, if you will, boundaries in your life to try to make good wise choices that are going to help you thrive mm -hmm. as an individual that are going to help you thrive as a friend, as a, as a spouse, yeah. as a, you know, parent, what, whatever it may be for, for someone mm -hmm. like for, for me, that was, that was part of that journey was just like going on a, a little quest, if yeah. you will, along the Lord of the Rings analogy. <laughs> going. Um, yeah. Going on that quest of being yeah. able to like, okay, wh yeah. wh why do I believe this? How much 
misinformation or miseducation about like the teachings of Jesus? Do you feel like there have been like in, in misunderstanding that Katie, you were talking about this a little bit, like misunderstanding kind of what Jesus was saying and what he was about. And because of that misunderstanding, like misusing what he was saying and the words that he spoke. And, you know, like, well, I think it was Gandhi who said like, I love your Christ, but I, like, I hate your Christians, you know, just yeah. like the difference between that and then like living that out in the application. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think that there's, it's, it's such a big thing to talk about, but I, I think that there's a couple different camps mm. of people when they, when they look at Jesus, I think there are the people that just, you know, see him as like a, a good teacher, like a good man. And so they kind of filter through his teachings. They believe that he exists, you know, they, they like certain parts of what he said. They like, you know, throw away other parts of what he said and they just kind of like pick and choose what they like <laughs> to really create a Jesus that works for them. Sure. Um, and that, you know, is, is nice. <laughs> you know, I think every, everybody <laughs> wants Jesus on their team. Right. So every, you know, every world religion, you know, acknowledges mm. Jesus in some way. Like mm. um, when you talk about, you know, things like the, the new age and, you know, a lot of these different, um, thought groups, you know, that everybody's cool with Jesus, you know, and I think they, they try to take that, you know, side of him as being like a person that, that was very loving and very accepting. And, you know, he was, you know, a, a teacher and, you know, all these types of things. And, and then there's the people that, you know, maybe look at Jesus as a, a, a rule setter, right. And they kind of like, approach Jesus is like, well, he basically just gave us a bunch of rules to live by. And so they become just very like legalistic and you need to do X, Y, Z. And they focus, they really focus in on like the rule side of it, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, how, how do I, how do I achieve salvation, you know, by following all these things. And so I, I, I think that there's, there's just a lot of people that, that focus in on, on different sides of Jesus and mm -hmm. like really who he was, was both. Right. And mm -hmm. he, he did set out, you know, he, he was exclusive. He said, this is who I am. Like I, I am the son of God. And, and, you know, he, he was very clear about that the way, truth and life, the way, truth and life. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, you know, he was incredibly loving and incredibly gracious and com yeah. incredibly compassionate, you know, so it's both, um, and yeah, I, I, I think a lot of people just kind of like lean like on one side or the other mm -hmm. when, when it comes to Jesus. So, so, so you're saying there should be balance. Well, there should in be the balance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that word. Mm -hmm. The real Jesus is, is not who we, who we make him to be in our minds. Right. Like, um, I forget who, who said it, but, um, there's, there's a quote where it, I forget who it was. I think it was Tim Keller said, if, you know, if the Jesus in your mind never disagrees with you, then he's probably not the real Jesus. Uh -huh. Jesus. Interesting. Then he's just like who you want him to be. And, and you're not really acknowledging who, who he truly was. So, um, yeah. yeah. Mm. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really good. Good job. Uh, I know this is, well, it's our podcast, so we can do whatever we want. But <laughs> you put that question back to me, and I, I just want to answer it, like, really kind of clearly. Like, what would I say if somebody was looking across the room at me and saying, I don't know if this is for me. I think I'm questioning everything. I might walk away. I, I think I would look them dead in the eye and say, good for you. Like, mm -hmm. I am so glad you're questioning everything. Like, mm -hmm. I literally got a text from my friend saying, like, I don't know if I'm, you know, there anymore. And this is someone who I, you know, was best friends with in high school. And, you know, I, I, I'm really glad she is because I feel like there's some foundational elements that they're, they're building their lives upon that are, like you said, not the real Jesus. And that goes so deep, especially for people that have grown up in the church, I think, that have seen hypocrisy that have have church hurts like your story um katie and our story and i think that if you don't question it if you don't every day go okay is this something i'm going to take today for me 
believe in it, claim it, take ownership of it, then what what is it really? You yeah. know, How's, if it's not changing me, what yeah, what good is that? Yeah. yeah. So I'd say bring it on. And if I can be a safe person for you to come to and ask questions yeah. and be there to support you, not to shove the Bible in your face or to shove, you know, whatever, but to, to answer honestly, then I would love to be that for you. But I don't know. I think that that was something that was huge for our marriage and for our personal lives that we were able to question it and that we felt the freedom. And um, that was because everything was ripped away from us, right? Like family, community, <laughs> yeah, uh, everything, job, you know, it was yeah. ripped away from us. Yeah. And I, I th- see that as such a huge blessing because it gave us a, a, a blank slate to then say, okay, what is the what is the faith that I'm going to own in my mm-hmm. life? So anyway, that's good. I guess I had to answer my, the question, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> She's for been thinking about that, that I the have. whole time. <laughs> She's yeah. just ready to pounce. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, w- w- one more question I have for you guys. Um, I, I, I like asking this because I think it means different things to different people, Absolutely. but like obviously our podcast is called the intentional thriver. Can, can you tell me like, what does that mean to you? What, what does that mean to you guys? Like based on everything that we've talked about, based on, you know, y- your guys uh, view of faith, your experiences, your stories, things like that. Like, what does it mean to you to intentionally thrive in your life? Intentionally thriving, I guess. So my, my school's motto um, is yeah, stealing, stealing from my school. Um, but it's, you know, we, we try to educate the whole child, right? Like mind, body, spirit. And I was thinking about that. And I feel like that, you know, when I think about intentionally thriving, I guess I think about thriving in, in those three ways, like Hmm. mind, body, spirit. Um, so like, what does that mean, you know, for, for my life? And obviously faith informs all of that, but, you know, to, to form, to, thrive physically, you know, and, and, uh, just take care of my, my physical body. Right. And like go outside, exercise, eat well, sleep, you know, all of Mm -hmm. these things. Um, and then to also be able to, to take that and be intentional about, you know, my, my time with the Lord and, and, and filling my spirit. And, um, as a mom, sometimes that looks like 10 minutes at the beginning of the day and being like, dear Jesus, help me get through this, like (laughs) potty training kicking my butt. You know what I mean? Like it's just like all those little minutes throughout the day, just like being intentional about connecting with the Lord Mm -hmm. and, um, just feeding my soul. And then, you know, mind as well, you know, like we've been talking about, you know, just engaging with logic and reason and culture and, and not just checking my brain at the door, but, you know, asking these questions and, and being intellectually honest about what I believe and why. And, um, so just kind of continuing to challenge myself to, to read, to, to listen to people have these discussions, you know, things like this, I think is, is really good, but just to, to make time for those things. Cause I feel like all of those three areas, like you have to work together, um, in order to truly thrive per se. So, um, I don't know all of those things. So good. Mm. It's good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that for me, it kind of does all start with, with understanding like why, like why life, like why life exists, a uh, why like, you as a person matter why me as a person matters Mm -hmm. um and i really do believe that like uh humans were created for for life with god Mm -hmm. uh, walking with god and i do think that like if you look through the scripture um the bible is such a it's it's in some sense um, a very simple book but in many senses it's a very complex and a uh, deep and challenging and complicated book. But I think kind of like the overarching kind of umbrella over all of that is this thread um, that God um, created us to have like relationship with him and God is pursuing relationship with us. Mm-hmm. And so I think um, that is found ultimately like the kind of the, the, 
the ultimate pinnacle of that is that like through Christ, we can have relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just think that, uh, that people owe it to themselves to like really genuinely like give that a chance. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that so often, um, cause Stephanie, I I mean, I do a hundred percent agree with you. Like if you are, in an environment that's like unhealthy if you're in an environment that is toxic or that's abusive like Mm -hmm. you should question that you know you shouldn't just mindlessly uh accept everything Mm -hmm. and like one of the um ultimate like crazy things like even like that one of the biggest things that like changed the world was like the reformation which was this idea of like you know humans should be able to read and learn about God for themselves and not have to have it be interpreted through like a a religious system. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I just think like, that's, that's the idea of like, of you, you owe it to yourself to genuinely seek for yourself Mm -hmm. and ask the questions for yourself. Yeah. Um, not through the lens of like, you know, like what does people on Instagram say or what does people on, you know, like people who have been hurt by the church or people who uh, are in the church, you know, like, but, but you owe it for yourself to truly like seek God and try to find God. And I think like, that's what you were created for is life with God. Hmm. To me, if you're going to seek God and find God, like you have to make a decision. How am I going to do that? And, And I believe like God's word um, the Bible is, is the best way to do that because any other path or method, like you're kind of like, you're, you're, you're seeking it through, you're trying to like, you're you're using your logic and your reason to kind of like invent God, Mm -hmm. the God you want. But I think if you seek God through the word, like you're trying to say, like, I'm really genuinely looking at the source and saying like, is this the God of like, is this Jesus? Is this God? So, I mean, I think that's a very long answer to say, like, we were created for life with God. Mm -hmm. And the best thing to do is to just genuinely seek and genuinely, like, look at him, look, look for him. Um, Mm -hmm. I think a great place to start is, like, looking at the life of Jesus, reading, like, Mark or reading John and saying, like, who who is this person that I'm supposed to be following? Is this somebody that I want to follow? Mm -hmm. And starting from there, because I really believe, like, we were made for life with God. Without that, it's very hard to thrive. That's right. Well, thank you Brian for sharing. Katie, thank you so much Your for being on journey. here. You guys are amazing. Yeah. Um, we love you. We appreciate mm-hmm. you. And uh we're we're we'll definitely have to have you guys on I again. Know. I'm very uh excited. because there's like a million different things that we could talk about. Obviously, we focused in on on faith today, uh, because you know, Brian is a pastor and that's been a big part of who you guys are and your story and and for us as well. That's been a big part of our journey too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll definitely have to talk about some of your parenting stuff um how how do you parent boys with two two boys or yes. yeah just no we, we love you guys we appreciate you thank you so much for being on the intentional thriver and uh yeah. we'll see you next time